Okay, welcome back. Uh, we hope you enjoyed those two sessions. Thanks to Chris Micus, the moderator, for uh, why, stay at the school, why Stay in School here in New Hampshire. Uh, and also thank you to Derek for talking about the science of COVID. Um, two good workshops, and we have a couple more this afternoon that are also just going to be amazing for all of you. Um, a couple, about a week ago, I had the opportunity to have a wonderful sit-down by way of Zoom, social distancing, with Margaret Flowers, the wife of doc, Dr. Woody Flowers. She's a powerhouse in her own right. I've had the chance to meet her at World Championships and other events throughout the last uh, 15 or so years. Uh, she is uh, a notable, uh, nationally known speaker for STEM. She's a huge uh, supporter of STEM and women, uh, especially in the mass and, and the engineering fields. Uh, she's also a bit of a thrill seeker, which a lot of people didn't know. Her and Woody Flowers uh, scuba dive, and of course Woody did skydiving, they ride quad bikes. Uh, they're pretty <laughs> active people. But we have some highlights, so let's play those highlights now. My interview with Margaret Flowers. Uh, your background's computer science, um, and you're a leading woman in STEM. Uh, could you, for the audience that's going to listen to this, could you talk about your background? Uh, my background, uh, my education, I have a master's degree in elementary education. You know, uh -huh. my, mother had insist my mother was paying for it, and she insisted on it. And I did that for two years in Lexington, Mass. But you really have to want to be a teacher. Woody wanted to be a teacher and loved it. Yeah. And I ended up uh, having a chance to get into computers. At that time, they, there weren't enough uh, graduate. There were, weren't a lot of curriculum uh, in colleges and universities to fill the line of all the people that were needed first for the software companies, hardware software companies, and second for business and insurance and all hospitals and all those things. Mm -hmm. So I was there for 25 years. And uh, when the opportunity to, yeah, I was the major breadwinner for most of that time. When the opportunity to, to uh, join with FIRST happened, I, I gave up my job. Yep. And, but it was and still is the best thing I know of. So very pleased. To, well, you're saying the best thing you know of, uh, of having a computer science background or? Oh, no, a FIRST. Oh, uh, good. OK, yeah. Organization FIRST. Yeah. Um, can I ask a personal question? I've, I've never, like, I get to talk to Woody a whole bunch of times, but I've never asked how the two of you met. Uh, we met four years before we married. So we started dating about roughly 60 years ago. <laughs> and that was at the university where we both were. Uh, I was a townie. Uh -huh. town. I also lived in the dorm, but lived in the town. And, uh, and, and and he was an engineer and I was in education. Yeah. And uh, I was with about seven of my friends one day in the place where people would get Cokes and sandwiches and stuff. And we left our books on the table, clearly indicating that that was our table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Came back and we found this person called Woody Flowers there. And we all looked at each other like, how dare he? And then he started asking our names and writing our names on the Formica top in pencil ah. with arrows. <laughs> and we thought, not too sure about that. <laughs> but, and we never really, uh, I guess we started dating about six months after that. Really? Um, so Margaret, uh, you're an avid reader. I've listened to Woody say that he gets uh, some of his books from you to read. Uh, you mentioned the 4 a.m. book club though. What is that? So we had, we, uh, I, I was a night person originally. And then whenever I stopped uh, working at the computer company, uh, I sp started switching over to see him more, uh, to be a morning person. And I'm still uh -huh. trying to figure out now what I am. But we would, have, <laughs> we would wake up at four o'clock and generally read for an hour, uh, originally actually reading out loud to each other, which is, really? yeah, yep. And we jointly picked a book. And uh, uh, so both of us had learned things that we hadn't thought we would learn. <laughs> Margaret, that's, that's incredible. I, some people it, said it's a very romantic thing. And it, it really is. You're, you know, uh, he, he, woke, he grew up in a family where coffee was the most important thing at the first part of your day. His father. Good. 
to take the first parts from drip coffee to the members, to his mother uh, uh, up at the house. And um, so we had a coffee, Woody, Woody made coffee the night before, took it upstairs beside his part of the bed. And at four, the coffee pot went on and we had coffee while we were reading. So the 4 a.m. book club, very nice. Besides reading and besides first robotics, uh, what were some of the things that you and Woody like to do? Uh, I I got certified as a scuba diver and <laughs> That's encouraged, great. encouraged him to do that. I and I I had fear of water from almost drowning in high school, so okay. it was like a personal best for me. And I I was one of the two people that got a pass plus at the end of the class, so a personal best. And then Woody got a uh, uh, a certification and we went on many dives together. I'd guess 100, 100 at least, 150. Really? Wonderful, good stuff. And uh, photography and all-terrain vehicles and uh, uh, ski mobiles and snowmobiles. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You're like, a, you guys are adrenaline junkies. I saw a documentary on the 270 class uh, yeah. that I, I don't know if Woody took that class over or if he found it, but describe the 270 class at MIT because it's pretty interesting. Uh, uh, the class itself had been started maybe one or two years, but there was no contest. And when he took it over, he started the contest there. Okay. So he was considered the grandfather of, of robotics education. Uh, yeah, I remember when I saw the documentary, it was about the students uh, in the class having to create something. Uh, and it became huge in that the uh, competition ended up having an audience of just most of MIT, it seemed like. Right. Uh, the course got bigger and bigger. Is, is that what led to Dean Kamen uh, getting introduced to Woody? Uh, yes, we had, uh, first of all, we had some mutual friends and people were uh, telling Dean, oh, you ought to meet Woody Flowers, and people were telling Woody Flowers, oh, you ought to meet Dean. So yeah. I believe the first thing uh, their official contact was when Dean, uh, when Woody invited Dean to give a lecture, I forgot in which class, at MIT. Okay. And we became friends with them and his parents and Bill and Bev Murphy. At, at all the different robot events, you know, I get to introduce a lot of speakers, and I always take pleasure in listening to another speaker uh, talk about their definition of gracious professionalism. Um, and I heard you say it years ago, uh, but just right now, right, you know, on the, on the fly, uh, describe what you think uh, is your best definition of gracious professionalism. Well, it, uh, Woody started it at MIT in the 270 class. And he was uh, teaching them to, quote, compete like crazy, but treat each <laughs> other with respect and kindness. Yeah. And that kind of says it all, I think. Um, the, uh, uh, the student, and then carried into FIRST. The students yeah. first at MIT and then at uh, FIRST can really uh, grasp that and remember you know, make your grandmother proud, as he would say. <laughs> Margaret, you're absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait to give you a hug. I know. Uh, as soon as I like, don't have to socially distance, yeah. to give you a Welcome hug back. next year. Uh, uh, Margaret, once again, thank you for your time last week. Uh, Cameron? Thank you, Dave. Um, this past year, we lost a great influence in the FIRST community, the father of competitive robotics, Woody Fla Dr. Woody Flowers. We have a video tribute to him now. After the video, though, we will not be coming back to the studio. We will going, be going right into our next workshop, which will be going into the keys of safety culture presented by Team 1073 and the inverted belly pan brain box <laughs> presented by Team 5813. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. While I do not think carefully defining gracious professionalism is essential, talking about it is very important. I think one of the main strengths of gracious professionalism is its dual modality. Gracious is mostly about feelings, both yours and those of others. Professionalism is mostly about knowledge and its application for good. Combining the two is important, so learn everything you can 
and experience helping others as often as you can. Being an effective contributor is a huge part of feeling good about yourself. Rational self-esteem is a big deal, and it is a likely outcome from practicing gracious professionalism while busting your chops in first. That's good stuff.